Hey guys, and we should be live. Uh, I'm hoping everything's okay. Uh, Brian's had a bit of a play with the settings, so if anything's changed in the background while I've been away for the past couple of weeks, please let me know if the audio volumes need changing or if I need to do anything to get the stream looking better. Um, I'm aware that some of the colours are slightly off, but I haven't had a chance to play with that, so uh, I'll fix that in post-production. Uh, just to shout out, first of all, to 159 with the tier 1 sub five months in a row. Thank you very much for that, dude. Really appreciate that. Um, hello to everyone who's here. So I've seen uh, 159, Starson, Pusher, Geo, Anarchy, uh, Reg Nation. Hey, man, good to see you all. Uh, glad to see you and glad to be back as well. We've got Tidal in the chat as well. Hey, man, good to see you. I actually have something from you uh, that came so just proof that I have it. it is here so thank you very much for that dude I won't show the other side because it'll reveal some details that I don't want to reveal <coughs> uh, Gio saying hey look it's my keyboard oh you mean the, the, the Jo one yeah well we'll see we'll see uh, Pingu ah damn it I'm too late to claim the first well the first was actually claimed by Anarchy at 7.44pm it's now 8.02pm uh, so uh, an hour and 16 minutes ago, so you were way too first to get first, way too late to get first. Um, we've got Jamos in chat as well, and uh, Mr. Grin Seppo, so uh, good evening, gentlemen, as well. Uh, and the Raging Asian with a resub as well. Uh, take my energy, Jay. Thank you very much, dude. I, I, I need it. I'm still exhausted uh, from events that have transpired this week. You can probably see the bags under my eyes still at the minute. I'm absolutely shattered still, but. I'm here, I'm live, and I'm going to enjoy the build. Uh, and that is 12 months in a row as well. 12 months, wow, a whole year, wow. Um, we've also got uh, Himps, uh, Pog, thanks dude, uh, Tronix, uh, and Necromant as well. So good evening to all, it is a pleasure to see you. Today we will be building the Cypher, which is this board here from uh, Cable Car Designs. I've gone for a split colourway with black on top and pink on bottom. Uh, and we've got a lovely polycarbonate plate, but we'll get in more, into more details about the board, uh, why I've picked those colours and what it's going to ultimately look like. Uh, we've also got tangerines, um, so these tangerine switches will be used in there. These have been lubed, uh, there's slightly different weights depending on which row at the bottom uh, we're looking at for different keys, and I'll talk through that as well when we start to get into the build. Uh, and you guys can keep me honest and make sure I'm putting the right switches in the right slots. Um, we have the PCB as well, a lovely red PCB just to one side, uh, and again we'll talk about this after the bots pinged and when we actually start to get into the build itself. Just going to catch up with chat, uh, Pusher says hugs and cypher love, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, yeet, yeah boy, oh, big old boards. Um, yeah, I like boards with a, an unpad. This is going to be my new work board once it's fully built and I'm back at work in a couple of weeks' time. Um, the board I have at the minute is a UK78, which I've had for a couple of years, and it's time that I had something a little bit different and, and changed it up at work, but I do need a numpad in when I'm in the main office, so this board will be perfect for that. Um, we've got Ham Kenobi, uh, Odin, uh, West Fox Straw. Everyone has a split colourway. Yes, I think everyone does. Um, there's a reason why I chose these two colours, though, I think, Max. Uh, so we'll cover that in a bit. Um, but the split colourways do look really good. Do look really good. Um, 159 says a high West Foss trunks as well. <laughs> We've got Pusher, uh, Danny 1998 as well. Um, not, I think everyone does. Yeah, I know they do. I'm not saying that though. I'm just saying there's a reason why I chose these two colours. Um, but we'll get into that anyway shortly. We'll get into that. Uh, is the plate polycarb? Yes, the plate is polycarbonate. Um, it's PC, 1.5 millimeter. We'll have a look at that when we take the board apart and start to do the build, um, and I'll cover that off. Uh, we've got straight classes as well. Uh, good morning, all. How are you holding up, Jay? I'm doing all right, man. Uh, as best as could be in um, in the current circumstances. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that when we start the stream properly. Um, Danny says, I can guess from the keycaps going on that, judging by the colours. Well, you might be able to guess what keycaps are going to go on here permanently, um, but I realised when I was setting up the stream that those keycaps aren't at home, so I can't use them. So many of you will suspect GMK Olivia, and you'll be absolutely right, that is the set that will ultimately be on this board, but that set is at work right now, so I don't have it at home to put on the board. What set will be going on here today for the build is a set that I picked up the other week from a friend of mine called Mel, which is uh, called GMK Tarot. I haven't actually had a chance to use it on any board yet, so I figured why not put it on here. The colours broadly work, or if they don't, they'll look terrible, and in which case they're coming off anyway, and I'll find another board for those to work on. 
And Chris Wise with the Twitch Prime sub as well. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, dude. Really appreciate that, man, as always. Um, Bingo says, mm, I swear there used to be an option to set the seam stroller stream quality on top clack now it's gone my potato interwebs are messing with me again you should have the uh, the option to do that um that should be on there uh funnel says tangerines not inks yes tangerines today i have run out of inks i don't have enough inks to fill a board uh, with an 18 a mini 1800 layout i have enough inks to uh do maybe a 60 percent but that's about it that's about the maximum i can get uh and title subscribe with twitch prime as well so thank you very much for that dude i really appreciate it thank you Ludwig says, I wanted the tower set off Mel, but you've got first dibs. Yeah, Mel and I uh, uh, have a thing where we give each other first dibs for a lot of stuff. Um, she's struggling with uh, vet bills at the minute because her little pooch is poorly. Um, so I've, I've been wanting the set for a while, uh, ever since I learned that it had ISO UK layout keys in there. So I picked it up off of her a couple of weeks ago. Um, and this is the first chance I'm going to have to put it on a board uh, where I think it will go. Um, so that's the plan. Uh, Stassen says the bot pinged. Thank you very much for that, dude. Thank you very much. And Met Advice Guy has arrived as well and says good evening. Uh, so good evening to you, sir. I need to have a chat with you, actually, Met Advice Guy, about whether I post some stuff to you prior to the meetup or whether I just hand it over to you at the meetup. So uh, ping me and let me know what you want me to do because I've got a fair bit of stuff for you. Um, yes, you're right. The bot has pinged. I can see that. Um, and just before we start, I'm just going to uh, grab a link for you guys um, because this board does come from Cable to Car Designs. So that's uh, Max or West Foxtrot in the chat today. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, uh, had his birthday the other day. So please do wish him happy birthday. Um, and uh, he, I'm going to try to use the board I haven't even built then. Uh, he designed and uh, made the cipher and he has a little bit of a website as well that you should go check out, which is there. Um, no, do please wish him happy birthday. He deserves it. He's a good guy uh, and he deserves it. He deserves it. 29 years old, I believe. So, fair play to you, dude. Fair play to you. Um, so, the bot has pinged. Uh, so, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before I do do the build. Um, firstly, I have been away for a couple of weeks. And for that, I'm sorry. I know Brian has talked about it a little bit. Uh, oh, 159 with the 1000 bits uh, with a happy birthday, Max. Thank you very much, dude. Um, the first week I was off in Budapest, I had a blast of a time on holiday. It was absolutely fantastic. If you guys haven't checked out the city, you should do because it is amazing. Uh, the food is great. The beer is fantastic. Uh, it's cheap. Um, there's so much to do, so much to see, and I had a whale of a time. Um, sadly, since I came back, things have not been quite so good in my personal life. Um, and I know Brian talked a little bit about this on Thursday. Um, last week I missed the show on Thursday night uh, for Top Clack because my mum was in a hospice uh, receiving care for her cancer. Um, sadly, she passed away yesterday morning, um, which was uh, we, it was expected at the time. We, we knew it was coming. Um, obviously, the whole family is really sad, and I I, did, I don't know um, when I'll be going back to work or anything like that. There's a lot to sort out. I just wanted to try and get back to a bit of normalcy and do a build stream today. So I'm, you know, I'm still a bit tired. I'm still trying to catch up from sleep. We were in the hospice and didn't leave for about, I don't know, about 80 hours. I think we were there. So I've had very little sleep over the past few days. Um, but she, when she passed away, it was quite peaceful, uh, and she was surrounded by a close family and friends. Um, so I was there. My brother was there, and my aunt and my cousin. We were all just there in the room with her. Um, and uh, whilst it was horrible. Um, she went out as peacefully as she could. She went out and she was uncomfortable and the nurses were fantastic. And I know they probably don't watch and they probably never will see this, but big shout out to any of the nurses at Wheatfield Hospice in uh, in Leeds um, in the UK because they were so good uh, and they helped. And they didn't just look after my mum, they looked after me and my family and everyone else that was there, the visiting as well, the friends and family that were there. Um, so that's why I haven't been around. Um, I will be back on Top Clack this week. Um, I'm back today, as you can see. Uh, I had to try and get back to a little bit of normalcy. I had to try and um, get back to my usual schedule. That helps me. Being busy is better for me uh, in times like this rather than not being busy. Uh, the more time I have to my own devices, the worse I'll be. So I just want to keep busy and carry on. Uh, Mountain Block says, so sorry, Jay, with the 200 bits and a lot of people saying, uh, passing on their condolences. Thank you very much, guys. I won't read through all of those messages. I just wanted to be open and honest about it up front and let you guys know where I'm up to, uh, what I'm doing and why I'm live today even though it's only a day later. I just need to keep busy guys. So this is me keeping busy and hopefully trying to entertain you. 
Um, so with that done, we'll now talk about the cipher. So I posted the link a little bit ago, uh, cablecardesigns.co slash portfolio dash post slash cipher. Uh, this is the cipher. Uh, so as Max said, everyone got a dual colorway split uh, board. I opted for uh, black and pink, as you can see here, pink base and black top. Now, um, in terms of this cipher run, it was a small limited number run that Max paid for in advance and sorted out and then sold the parts. Um, there were some uh, issues with some of the boards and when it came down to buying them, Max offered everyone the option of one A stock part and one B stock part. So my black top, as you can see, is A stock and it's in absolutely fantastic condition. Uh, my bottom is pink and is, <laughs> my bottom is pink, uh, and is a B stock piece. Now there's a couple of little things. Um, you might be able to see just here, there's like a little chip on the edge. Um, I think that's all there is on that edge. There's, that's just uh, my warm hands on the cold metal in here. Uh, round on this side, again, there's no issues there. So on all of the sides, flush and visible, that you can see there's no issues on any of the seams. There's that one tiny little mark on the first side I showed you. Uh, on the bottom, we've got this lovely cipher logo, and as you can see, the base is in pretty much, uh, just fingerprints at the top there, pretty much fantastic uh, uh, condition. There is one mark which you can see just here, um, that's the only mark on the base that's not permanent. There's a couple of other marks that are fingerprints and things like that, but that one mark there um, is what makes it B stock. And there is the one mark just here on the uh, the chamfered surface there. So other than that, this is absolutely lovely. It's going to be, as I say, my work board. I'm going to be using this in the office. Um, the A stock top is fantastic. The B stock bottom is in really good condition. It's for B stock. I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, so Max has done and knocked it out of the park with that. In terms of how the board's put together, as you can see on the base, there are eight screws to hold it together. Um, nice standard uh, board. It is top mount, so when we look on the inside, this does top mount. On the inside, there's a polycarbonate plate. And I have got a carbon fiber plate coming if I'm not happy with the feel of the polycarbonate because I don't have a polycarbonate plate build. So let's see how that goes. Just flipping back over to the bottom, there's also some lovely uh, engraved cipher logo here in the font that Max has chosen. This is quite interesting because it's actually a different finish on the inside, and I'm, I'm struggling to get that to show on camera. You might be able to see that. It's kind of sandblasted on the inside and then polished smooth on the outside, which just gives it a really, really nice uh, edge and difference to that as well. So that's the board there. Uh, in terms of the PCB, as you can see, it is... Uh, <laughs> mid USB mount and this is USB mini not USB-C. Uh, red PCB offers a few different layout options uh, so you can have the ANSI or the ISO shift and enter, split back base space or normal backspace and then you can have a couple of different options on the bottom row. In terms of the numpad compatibility you can have either one U or two U keys here for the enter and the plus. I'm going to roll with two plus keys, uh, sorry two, two U keys for the plus and the enter here today uh, as that's just my preferred layout. I'm going to go with full backspace ISO enter and split left shift. For the bottom row, I'm going to do the 7U bottom row, which is 1.25, uh, sorry, 1.5, 1.5, 7, 1.5, 1.5. Um, four arrow keys as well. And then, oh, the other thing's quite as well. Uh, nicely, the reset button is on the top of this board, which means that when the board's built, the reset button sits just behind this cutout in the plate as well. So only need to remove the space bar to reset the board. You don't actually have to take the board apart to do anything like that as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so that's the board. Um, before I catch on to the switch, I'm just going to catch up with chat. Um, so a few people pass on their condolences. Thank you very much, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I miss my mum a ton already. Uh, I actually bought a vintage mug today, and the first thing I wanted to do was run and show it and say, didn't we have one of these back in the 80s when I was a kid? And then I realised I couldn't, and it hit me hard. It really did. Um, so thank you very much for, your, uh, for, the, for that. Thank you. Uh, Olivia says heart at J. Thank you, Olivia. It's good to see you again. Um, and uh, glad to see you back on stream. Uh, Rope says it's a very nice pink though. It is. It's a lovely pink. It's actually quite close to the color that you can see on, on stream in real life is this pink. It's not too far um, uh, change with the camera and the lighting and things like that. It's quite close. Uh, Fax is around as well. Good evening, Fax. Uh, we will be using some of your stabilizers tonight. So thank you very much for that. And we've also got Josie Brewer with the Twitch Prime sub, uh, subscribed for six months uh, and says cheers. So cheers, thank you very much. Uh, ISO Return says, yeah, Jay, you're back. Uh, you were missed. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I really do. Um, 
Kuodenka is here as well saying, hey, Jay, just made it in time apparently. And Alchemist says, good to have you back, Jay. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Ham Time also says, oof, hi, Jay, that Kippur Reflex. Yeah, I think I've got a few more that I need to get and coming in. Uh, and you know a little bit about that as well. Um, but she says, yeah, weird pens you have there. It is a pen rail. Yes, I do usually have a pen on there, but I'm just trying to work out which of those uh, Kippuras go with which key sets. So I've had them out and I've been playing around with some things earlier on today as well prior to the stream. Um, Danny says, will you be taking this board to the meet? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, and I missed your sub, did I? I'm so sorry if I missed your sub. Danny, you did sub. Yes, I can see that now. Switch sub with Twitch Prime. I'm so sorry I missed that. Um, I'm not sure if this will be coming to the meet with me or not. I'm only wanting to take five or six boards, not 10 or 15. Um, so I really need to work out a short list of what boards are going to come to the UK meetup in a few weeks' time, uh, especially when I've got things like a Satisfaction 75 coming and uh, a few of the bits and pieces as well. So. I don't know is the honest answer and it might be at work as well by that point so if not there will be some other ciphers there uh, i have heard a couple of other people are going to be bringing them so the board will be there even if it's not mine that's there um and we've also got dr unconscionable and uh, talisman solution and with his traditional 1111 bits and he says welcome home jay thank you very much dude thank you very much uh, satisfaction 75 designer not trash like cipher designer uh neither of you are trash uh, Max, so I wouldn't go that far, but there will be other ciphers that are able to go and uh, there won't be any other satisfactions that are able to go, it's uh, uh, simple as that, but um, uh, if this does make it into the boards I take, which it may, may well do, um, I, I usually try and take the last seven boards I built to the meetup or whatever people have asked me to take, so if there's people asking for it, I'll take it. Um, so without that uh, much further ado, let's get on and talk about the switches. So in terms of the switches, I am using tangerines. Now, I've spring swapped all of these uh, for different weights for different features. So the standard um, keys for the alphas and the numbers uh, and everything else, those are all 72 gram spritz springs. Um, I've also then got four here for the uh, for the number. Those are 80 gram, uh, sorry, 78 gram spritz springs. Um, and then I've got uh, five here, which are 150 gram and 180 gram for the space. So the 150 gram are for the enter, the backspace, uh, the plus and the enter, the, all of the two U keys. And then I've got a 180 gram uh, key for the space, which may be a touch heavy and I might have to change it out later on, but it'll be really, really heavy uh, space key. They've all been lubed with Crytox 106 on the springs and they've all been lubed with uh, 205 grade zero on the stems and the housings as well. They're all super silky, super smooth and super lovely to use. Now the switches do come from a batch of uh, round one tangerines and round two tangerines, um, but I put them all into one tub and then uh, sorted them all out from there. And you can actually see, it might be difficult for me to show this on camera, but there's actually a color difference between the round one tangerines and the round two ones. So you can probably see just here that this one's kind of a white color and this one next to it's kind of a yellowish color. I'm not sure if that's that's clear on stream or not. Let's see if I can get it on the other camera and the lights a little bit different. So you can see here, going to work is that going to show no it's not going to show i don't think but um oh you might be able to see a bit better there so this one is a little bit more white and this is a little bit more creamy colored uh, so these are the r1 switches and these are the r2 switches um i'm not quite sure why there's a color difference but there is there's no feel or sound difference it's just a slight color change across the two um, so that's what we're going to build the board with, um, but the next job is to take this apart and start to let's have a look inside how it's designed, because I haven't actually done that yet. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the plate as well and talk a little bit more about the plate. This is where I need to work out what size adapter I need. I think we might be on that. Nope, one more up. Nope, okay, we're going to have to use a Torx bit to try and fit in this, I think. There we go. Oh, we've also got the Pokemon Kid. Hi, Jay, how's it going? I'm doing okay, man. I'm doing okay. Um, not too bad at all. I've uh, been better, I'll be honest. But uh, we're getting there. And it's build stream day, so that's always good news.
Um, Danny says you can sort of see the difference. Uh, you can tell for sure. Um, yeah, it, it is much easier to see in real life um, than it is on stream. But there is a colour difference between the two. Um, so I don't know why. I assume it's just a different uh, colour of plastic that they use or something like that. Okay, so that's the four screws there. The rest of the screws are in here in this little bag. Now before we take the board apart, just before I forget, I am going to put the... Uh, the rubber bump on the feet on this board. Max has uh, got these perfectly designed. Uh, they they just fit in. They're not too big. They're not too small. Um, a lot of bump ons you find easily fit into the holes, or they're not snug enough, or they move around, or they're too big for the holes as well. Um, these are just right. So I'm just going to apply these. There we go. That's that done. Okay, then we're going to take the bottom part of, part of the board, pop that to one side. We'll come back and have a look at the internals in a second. So here's the internals of the top of the case. Uh, as you can see, this is a top mount board. Um, there's a little bit of dirt and marks on this, but that's just dirt on there. Uh, so there's eight mounting points for the uh, for the plate uh, across the board. They're not quite evenly spaced. There is a difference between the gap here and here, uh, just due to the different layouts of the board and where the positioning screws and things like that are as well. The other point to note as well is that whilst there are the mounting points for the screws, um, you can see there's got the eight of those across the board. When we look at the base, there is also alignment pillars and alignment posts on the base to help get that smooth flush fit. So we've got one here, just up here, one over here and one here as well. So if I turn this on the edge, you can kind of see those mounting points a little bit more clearly. That just helps with all of that alignment, worries and issues that you may have with the board. It just makes it much easier to put together. So it's a nice little touch. <clears throat> In terms of the uh, the plate itself, it's 1.5 millimeter um, and it's polycarbonate. I just need to grab a Phillips screwdriver here. There we go. And as you can see, it's built in, uh, so it's made to support um, all of those lovely universal layout options. I'm just gonna pop these screws all together up here so I've got them separate. There we go. Okay, and uh, UPass is here as well. Good evening, UPass. Um, Max is not trash. Max is definitely not trash. Um, he might think he is, but he's not at all. Um, I love it when you say snug. Snug. Yeah, it's a good word. Uh, Corbin Dallas has, uh, says, Jay, welcome back as well. Uh, and he resubscribes with Twitch Prime for 19 months. 19 months, dude. That's the first 19 month that I've seen. Um, and I suspect I've probably missed a couple over the past week or two while I've been absent, but 19 months is a huge amount of time. So thank you very much for that, dude. Thank you. Okay, so just removing the plate. Um, as you can see, it clips in nice and neatly onto that. We'll just put that back and come back to that in a second. So in terms of the plate, as you can see, this is polycarbonate, which means it's extremely flexible. Um, there is a lot of flex in it. It's 1.5 millimeters. Uh, the bow doesn't matter because it'll all straighten up as soon as you put keycaps in it. Um, it does support, um, as I said before, universal layouts. It's universal ISO. Um, it does have universal uh, split left shift, uh, enough universal capability there for the split or full backspace, the same for split or full plus and enter keys. Uh, and then it also offers a couple of options for the bottom row as well, 7U and 6.25U respectively. Um, so there we go, so that's the plate. Um, I'm really interested to try this. I have a sneaky suspicion that I'm probably personally not gonna like it, and I'm gonna end up switching out for the carbon fiber plate that Max is making for me separately. Um, but I am really interested to try it and see how it sounds. Um, so. As you can see, the plate has been cut really nicely. There's a few little marks on it, uh, just around here, for example, but they'll all be covered up by keycaps. Um, but it looks great and it feels great. Um, it feels nice, it's sandblasted. Um, it seems even finish. As you can see, it's super flexible. Um, so if you guys do like a flexible build board, this might be an option you want to look at. I mean, it just look at the twist on it, it's just it's really super flexible. Um, just catch up with chat a little bit as well. Um, Pokemon's Kid says, oof. 
Matt Advice says, no, he's just the worst in general. Not at all. Not at all. No one's worst. Oh, the worst format, mate. Oh, yeah, Max is, um, sorry. Max is good, but the Pokemon Kid is definitely the worst format MKUK admin. Absolutely. Uh, given he's the only one. Um, and 6U, yes, sorry, Max. It does support 6U bottom row. I forgot to mention that. It does support 7U, 6.25U, and 6U bottom row. Um, if that's floppy, what's the point then? Just go plateless. Uh, no, it adds switch alignment options. Uh, it does add some support um, and a tiny bit of rigidity, and it will also change the sound profile as well. Um, so whilst there is a, you know reasons to go for a plateless build, um, you also couldn't do this plateless because it needs to be top mounted. So it needs a plate to hold it to the top. Um, and that's where you get all of the flexibility from the polycarbonate between the pegs here. So you couldn't do this uh, polycarbonate with, uh, you couldn't do this build without a plate at all. You have to do it with a plate because it's top mount. That's kind of how it works. Um, a lot of people like flexible plates and PCBs. That's just kind of one of the themes of the hobby lately. People like that bounce, that flexibility when they type. They, they like that feel. Uh, personally, I tend to prefer firmer boards, uh, which is why I've got things like the Zephyr, uh, the way the JL1 is designed, even though it's a gasket mounted board, it's more isolation mounted, uh, and that's quite firm. Um, but, you know, people like this, um, but it's definitely something I want to uh, want to try. Uh, West Fox shows it's different once you have the PCB and switches in play. Plate is good for sound. Yeah, absolutely. As I've said a second ago, it does change the sound profile massively. So I'm really interested to see what that sounds like and how it feels as well. Uh, once assembled, it's very different. Yeah, the switches will fully, pull it fully taut. It will look like any other plate. Uh, you won't have that movement in it uh, uh, like you do here. You won't be able to go like that with the plate and PCB, for example. So th those add the rigidity. This will add the top mount flexibility in terms of the typing feel, and it will change the sound. Um, Rage and Agent donates some bits as well. I don't know how many that was. I didn't catch it, but thank you very much for those bits, dude. I really appreciate them. Okay, so let's crack on with the build then. Um, so as I said before, we have got certain switches for certain areas of the PCB. Um, the first thing I'm going to do though, before we carry on, is clip and lube the stabilizers, and then we'll put the uh, the board together. So. As I said before, we were going full backspace, uh, full 2U+, plus, full plus 2U, enter, uh, ISO enter key here, and then we'll be going with the 7U spacebar, um, which does mean that we need 1, 2, 3, 4 stabs and a 7U spacebar stab, which you can see I've already got lined up here. And just while we do that, I'm just going to have a quick gasp of some drink. Apologies for that. Uh, Rage Nader says, missed one bit. Oh, there we go. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Uh, and Nebula says, J Bay. Oh, thank you, Nebula. I appreciate that, dude. Um, so for those of you who haven't seen before, I'll quickly cover off how I clip the stabilizers. We'll run through that, and then I'll build them, and then I'll lube them really quickly. Uh, in terms of clipping these, you can see here there are four legs on the base. Uh, we've got one on this corner and one on this corner here. They have a slightly different profile when you look at them from the side. You can see that that base leg here um, has got a little nubbin on the end it's also really flexible it makes it mushy when you bottom out on those so what i'm going to do is just take off those two flexible legs and leave the top of the uh, stabilizer nice and flush and smooth so as you can see we've now taken off those two legs and when we look at the stabilizer it's completely flush on top so there's no little nubbin sticking out just for reference if i show you on here so if you look at this one you can see that there is no one's sticking up. Oh, that one's already been clipped. I already have some that clipped. Don't know how that happened. Um, if you look here, you can kind of see that it's not flush on the bottom. There's kind of like raised bits and bumps. And then once we've clipped them, it's fully smooth and flush on the bottom. And that's what we're aiming for. Uh, to remove the mushiness and make sure it's nice and clean on the bottom out. <clears throat> so I'm just going to carry on clipping these. And then we'll put them together and then we'll give them a quick lube. Again, that one's already been done. I just keep my stabilers in a big pot lately. Um, well, a series of drawers to be more technical. Uh, I have a drawer for the inserts, a drawer for the screwing parts, a drawer for the clipping ones, a drawer for the wires. Um, I have a few different drawers to make sure I've got everything all, all sorted out and arranged nice and neatly. Um, so I suspect I just had some pre uh, ones that have either been used in a previous build or ones that um, I prepared and never used uh, and then taken apart which is why they've been clipped already uh, 
Okay, almost through clipping these. Okay. Uh, I don't recall this board in group by, was it open or private? Um, it wasn't really open or private. Um, Max just had this in stock on his site. Um, I was lucky enough to, to buy one of them. Um, so it wasn't really a group buy or uh, a private group buy or anything like that. It was just something that was available. Um, I had a chat with Max and bought one. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's just one of those things. Um, uh, oh, Max says there he bought stock. Yeah, follow Cable Car Designs on Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. Do follow him. Um, the Vortex Cypher is the name of the board. Uh, I just literally messaged him bought one. Max and I go way back uh, from the MK UK community. Um, so yeah, uh, it was nice. Um... Damn, sorry I missed it. I've been looking for something with this layout. Uh, Max might be doing more of them, I think. Uh, he does say group by maybe. Um, so depending on what the reaction to this build is and what people think of the boards out there and all that kind of stuff, um, Max may want to do some more of these boards, but I think they sold out quite quickly. Uh, I think he was able to sell them really easily, so there we go. Uh, enough people are asking. Well, there we go, that's it then. If enough people are asking, then you should do it, Max. You should do it. Um, can't wait for ANSI, Samich PC, yum. Yes, I'm looking more forward to my ANSI as well. I went for, which is also designed by Max and Cable Car Designs. I went for one in the lovely aubergine colour, so I'm looking forward to that coming in. Um, Corbin Dallas says, nice keyboard is on the J01, by the way. Thank you. I've got some more on the way. Um, in fact, I just won one today, which will go with my other J01 build, the, uh, uh, the Red Samurai build. So I'm hoping to fill all of these artisan clusters out. I'll show you there. You can't see, you all know what the J1 looks like. Anyway, it's got the eight uh, macro keys down this side. Um, so I'm trying to make sure that I've got eight artisans that match the uh, um, uh, the theme of the board uh, and the colorway of GMK Red Samurai. Uh, so I've got five now in total. Um, so I just need another three, uh, which is what I'm going to be looking for when I get back into things properly. Um, oh shit, I was late. Soren says, hello. Hello, Soren. No worries, we're literally just about to start. Um, West Fox says group buys a cancer though. Um, yeah, just doing it at limited quality or what found out to vendors, all of those kind of things are options. But Max knows what he's doing, so I'm a fully uh, optional. I'm fully sure he'll sort that out. Uh, if you like 1800s and like the 40%, there'll be the Rain M3, which is a 40% 1800 inspired board. Yep, uh, I've seen that. I'm looking forward to seeing that at the meetup as well, Bled. Uh, I can't wait to see that. Um, so yeah, so lots to go on there. Yeah, West Fox Shop Max, if you want to post a link to your Insta or your website or anything like that, please do get it up. I did share a link to Max's website earlier on. Um, I can get that again. Um, hold on. Here we go. So this is the re the page for this particular board on Max's website. Uh, I think it's work in progress at the minute, so don't judge him on that. But do go check it out if you want to. Okay, so we've clipped the stabilizers. What we're going to do now is assemble them. And then once we've assembled them, we're going to lube them. Um, I'm just going to start popping these together. And oh, we've been 35 minutes now and I haven't even got anything in the board. Querdenka, I'm taking after you, dude. I'm running slow and late today. That's one done. Okay, so there there we go. Follow Max. Uh, go Do go see him. Follow Max's... Uh, Instagram channel, go have a look at his boards. I'll be posting some pictures on the Top Clap channel and my channel uh, of this board when the build's complete, probably tomorrow when I can get the uh, uh, the Olivia key set on it rather than the Taro, which I think will look okay, but it probably isn't ideal for this board. Um, so we'll have a look at that tomorrow. Quid delay, absolutely. Uh, Pokemon says, Kid says, I got this race in the bag. No, I'm going slow, dude. I've had a long week. I'm really tired. Um, with mum passing away yesterday, I haven't had a chance to uh, to really prepare for this stream like I normally do. Um, so I am going really slow because I'm tired. So don't you worry yourself. Any race, uh, I'll uh, I'll have it in the bag. Don't worry. Gwenig says, not sure if this still counts making fun of me, but I'll take it. Uh, of course it makes fun of you. So, uh, so there we go. Uh, yeah, Bledin, I'm not putting Olivia on it right away, and the reason for that is because Olivia is at work. Uh, my Olivia key set, GMK Olivia, um, is on my work board currently. I haven't brought it home, and because I've not been in work for the past few days uh, with everything that's been going on in my personal life, 
Um, I haven't had a chance to collect it, so GMK Taro is going to go on there for now, and then tomorrow when I can pick up GMK Olivia, I'll uh, take some proper pictures and put that on Instagram tomorrow night. Okay. <clears throat> the other point to remember as well, Matt, is uh, about these builds. Um, I have done like 30 minutes of preamble talk about what's been going on and what's been happening and about Max's board and stuff like that. In terms of the actual build, I think we've only been going a few minutes. Um, I'm not going into work to work tomorrow, uh, but in, I'm going into work tomorrow uh, just to have a quick chat with my boss, and that's about it. Um, so, yeah, my mum died as an excuse, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to go into work tomorrow, have a chat with my boss, and that's it, and just pick up a few bits and pieces. Um, there's some stuff at work that I'm going to need over the next couple of weeks uh, for documents and things like that, so I just need to go and pick those up, have a chat with my boss, and let them know I'm going to be off for another week or so. Um, so yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but she'll be more than fine with my boss. Uh, there shouldn't be any issues with that. She knows the situation. Um, her father's in a similar sort of situation as well. Um, so there's a lot of understanding from work at the minute. Um, so it's not to actually work. It's just to uh, uh, to do some chores more than anything else. Oh, thank you very much, Corbin Dallas, for the condolences. It's um, I'm I I I. I Obviously, I'm incredibly upset. I was an absolute wreck yesterday. Um, I'm not much better today. I just needed to get back into doing something normal, something I do every Sunday to try and get myself back on track. Um, and I miss doing this sort of stuff. And my mum would want me to, you know, carry on as uh, as as normal um, and try and just be, you know, live my life to the, the fullest. And this is one of the things I truly, really enjoy. Uh, so this is why I'm here today. So now we've got all the stabilizers built. Uh, I'm going to lube them. Uh, so as always, I'll talk you through the first one. Uh, so just a small bit of lube on the brush. We're going to brush on one side of the stabilizer slider. Get rid of that hat. We're then going to turn it over and brush on the other side. We're then going to take a good sized blob and we're going to push into the back where we can see uh, the uh, the back of the wire and you're going to try and make sure that goes all the way through. Once we've done that you've got just enough left on the brush to just paint the front of the wire Then we're going to take another another blob push up from the other side of the wire inside the slider housing and then I'm going to turn it over and put a rice sized amount on the bottom just take a piece just like so and push that across the bottom. Should have enough lube left on your brush to do the second side, so we're just going to paint that on nicely. Flip that over, and then into the back again. Trying to push it all the way through, making sure it's all nice and evenly coated. Over to the front, paint the wire where it touches the plastic. Up into the housing again. Trying to paint all the sides, make sure we're covering it nice and evenly onto the base. And again, a riced sized piece just on the base. That's one stabilizer done. Uh, Odin says, how do you like a smartwatch compared to the analog one? Um, I've worn my Apple Watch uh, for about four years now, I think. I got them when they first came out, and then I got the second version. This is still my the second version, version two. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, I wouldn't be without it to be honest. I it's so useful at work. Most of my work days spent in meetings and things like that. I probably you know between nine and five. I'm probably back to back with meetings most days. So notifications of emails from work and stuff like that. Um, it's absolutely fantastic for all that kind of stuff. Um, plus then when you're working out, you're going to the gym, you're doing stuff like streams. You you know you're busy with other things. You're driving. Notifications are really good in all of those situations as well. Um, tracking. Uh, activity I found it really good for helping me lose a little bit of weight um, so yeah I think I really prefer them if I'm going to something that's a dressy event I do sort of flip back to an analog watch I've got a couple of really nice ones uh, an Amiga a Tudor Rolex that kind of stuff um, which I genuinely love uh, and adore um, so I do flip over to those depending on what I'm doing and where I'm going uh, but for most of my days 90% of my days just uh, just tracking my activity um, using it in meetings and stuff like that. The Apple Watch or other smart watches are really useful for that kind of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't change and go back to a daily analog watch at all. That being said, I do use an analog um, uh, face, so I'm one that tracks activity. As you can see, I've been very, very lazy today and done bug at all. Um, I've just not felt like it, if I'm honest. 
Okay, let's just catch up with chat and see what else is on there. Um, uh, yeah, but then you need to take the week off and look after your fur ball. Absolutely. Um, that would be uh, very advisable for you to do. <clears throat> uh, Poker says, says, small bit anarchy is wincing. Um, yep, it is a small bit of lube. Um, I don't over lube these. It's easier to add more lube later on um, than take it away. And to be honest, there's more than one way of uh, of lubing stabilizers. Um, I don't like unlubed stabilizers, which some people do. Um, there's no real right answer. It's all about preference. Okay. Making some good progress now. Hopefully we'll have these done in a second. Then we can get them in the board uh, and start to get the switches in. People who like unlubed stabs are monsters. Um, no, not really. People just like different things. Just liking something doesn't make you any worse or better. It's just, you know, preference. If we all like the, if we all like the same things, the world would be one hell of a boring place. Um, so I'm completely okay with anyone liking anything at all, um, even if it's not to my preference. Uh, currently off this week anyway, but he's having surgery at the minute and we'll be feeding him through the tube in a second. Oh, poor little critter. I hope he's alright. My thoughts go out to you, uh, blood in. I hope he's, uh, I hope he's okay, but with you to look after him, I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, what lube am I using right now? I'm using uh, Crytex Dielectric Grease. Um, sorry, not Crytex Dielectric Grease. Dielectric Grease, this is the car lube brand, but it's also identical to the Silver Hook brand. Um, it's basically uh, a multi-purpose grease, uh, but it is fully dielectric. Oh, I'm dripping it. What am I doing? Oh, bugger. Dripping it onto the uh, onto my ocelot. Right, I'll have to clean it up after the stream. Oh, dear. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm using at the moment. Um, just silicone dielectric grease. Uh, it's water repellent, but it does clean off nicely with a, uh, a baby wipe if you ever need to remove it from anything. Okay, just getting the other side of this. And into the back of the stabilizer. Rip, ocelot ruined. No, nope, not at all. It'll be fine. Debian says, I need to find a good OEM ergonomic keyboard uh, for work. Doesn't seem like there are a lot of options that are readily available. Um, yeah, I'm not really into ortho keyboards. If you mean, oh, you mean ergonomic, sorry, I didn't read that properly. Um, yeah, I've, I've used the VEA a lot at work, um, but the tent kit just isn't a good travel option. Um, I've also used the Alice, but I worry about damaging it considering its value. Um, so uh, there isn't a good alternative one at the moment. Now, that being said, Pingu is doing a low cost board that, uh, that may uh, suffice for that use case uh, and mech boards are also looking at doing the DC01 they're finally looking at prototype round two um, and hopefully that board will be up soon because I'm excited for both okay just making sure I've got all of these areas lubed nicely And we'll move on to the last stabilizer in a second. I'm just going to get a little wipe. Now we've done that one. And just clean this off. I'll clean it properly later on, but I'll just get the thick of it off. There we go. All nicely cleaned up, as I say, baby wipes pick up grease and oil like no one's business. So if you ever do need to get anything clean, uh, baby wipes are where it's at. Um, what else are we talking about? Um, ocelot ruined? Nah, the ocelot's fine. Um, at least the ocelot is getting lubed again. Yeah, well, it's fine. It's a fine. Uh, work would pay for it, but it has to be. Oh, someone says that's not an OEM board. You're right, it's not OEM. I don't know if there is an OEM one, to be honest. Um, I don't really look at OEM boards a lot. Um, but I'd be very surprised if there was one. You'd probably pick up one of the original uh, Microsoft boards that uh, we're all trying to emulate these days. Okay. 
Okay. Um, Mr. Barocco, that's a good shout, actually. Um, the Barocco is a nice board. What was that um, uh, other one? The um, Not the Happy Hacking Keyboard. Was it the Happy Hacking Keyboard? No, that's HHKB. Um, there was another one that was around hacking or uh, was named after hacking or something like that. It was very similar to the Mr. Barocco, but had red uh, LED stuff on the top and layer indicators and things like that, and it had a coil cable to join the two halves together. I can't remember what it's called, but one of you guys will know. Um, that might be an option as well. Maybe that was the UHK, actually, Ultimate Hacking Keyboard, I think, something like that. I can't recall. Okay, so that's all of our stabilizers lubed. So I'm going to move that out of the way to one side. Um, Ultimate Hacking Keyboard. Yeah, there it is. There's someone's pasted the link already. Um, today I learned. Thanks for the tip. Uh, Topcon says, did you buy a custom PCB for the J01 and how much was a PCB? So yes, I had a design commission for the PCB uh, through Martin Wood uh, or Martin or uh, Martin Decker's, uh, I can't remember the name of his website. Um, I think I want to say it's MK Deckers or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'll link his website later on. If someone else wants to link the website, please do. Uh, but I approached Martin, asked him if he would design me a PCB that was custom for it. Um, I had to buy five, as five was the MOQ, and he also designed a small daughter board for the USB as well. Um, but yes, it is a full custom PCB. There's only five of them at the minute. I've got two in builds, and the other three are on the floor, just in this part behind me down here. Um, so yeah, so there it is a fully custom PCB. In terms of cost, um, I can't recall off the top of my head how much it was. Was, I think it was in the region four or five, something around the point of 300 euros, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but that included Martin hand soldering the wall and putting them together as well. Um, if you want one, the best thing to do is approach Martin or another PCB designer and just ask them what the cost would be. Uh, so when I do the 10 spot run of the J01, Martin's going to give me a quote for doing the 10 PCBs I'll need for that, plus a few spares. Uh, and we'll go from there. Um, bub, 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 bub. Top clack. Yeah, sorry, I got it. Yeah, you were there with the link than, than I was. Uh, faster than I was. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, martinwood.com. There you go. Thank you very much, sorry. Okay, so that's the uh, the stabilizers uh, built to leave. So what we're going to do now is put these into position. So we have got one here for the uh, plus key on the numpad. We've got one here for the enter. We've also got one here for the backspace, the full backspace that we're using. Uh, I've got another here for the ISO enter key. And then we've got another one for the 7U space bar. Um, so I need to work out where this one goes. I think it's going to go here. I think it's going to go just there. Let's just check that all lines up. There you go. As you can see, the plate is very, very flexible. That looks uh, right to me. Uh, yep. Okay. So. Yep. Okay. So there we go. That's all correct and in the right spot. <clears throat> so we're going to do now is just quickly screw these into position. Uh, so we've got the screws for them just here. Um, so I usually do use hex screws. Unfortunately, I only have uh, Phillips ones remaining. So. Uh, the, uh, the hex ones I'll have to get from fax on my next order. So I'm just going to screw these in nice and neatly. Again, when you're screwing these in, don't go too tight. You just want to go finger tight. It's to hold it in place, not to crush it between the PCB and the uh, the stabilizer. So don't go too hard with them. Just go, um, just go tight enough to feel it nipping together. Um, not tight enough that you're going to start damaging the board. 7U will only fit in the 7U place. Thank you, Max. That's good to know. Sometimes on these boards, when you've got multiple options, it's easy to get in the wrong place. Oh, and we've got Glue as well in chat. Hey, Glue, my uh, brother from another. Um, good to see you. Uh, Max also says, you might need a washer or tape or something for the ISO enter. Okay, yeah, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, currently on the keys we've got here, there's no need for tape or anything else on these uh, screw and stabilizers. Uh, and the reason for that is because there's no contact points or anything else underneath them. Just going to have a look at the backspace now. So we're doing one side of the backspace here. Again, just screwing them down, not nipping them tight. Um, not sure if there's okay clearance there. Only built ANSI. Uh, my OSO works without problems. Okay, great. Well, we'll see when we get to it. I'll only be a second away. Uh, we'll see if there's any points that cover off. 
uh, as you've suggested there might be problems I'll come to that last I'll just jump down to the space bar and then we'll jump back up to the oh we'll jump back up to the enter key in just a minute Okay, uh, I think there's a question there. Um, Anarchy, oh no, okay. Uh, I think someone built both his ISO 2 that problem's good to know. Uh, where did I get the screw mount? This was actually a present from uh, Tidal, Josh, who's in chat today. Uh, well, sent me a nice uh, card the other day. Um, uh, that came from him as a Secret Santa gift, as well as my lovely little solder holder roller. Um, so I can just uh, roll out solder as I need it. Um, so very big thank you to him for both of those items. Uh, I use them every single week when I stream, so it's good to see. Okay, we're just going to jump over to the uh, ISO Enter uh, and look at the screw points for this. Uh, as Querdenk has suggested, there is no issues, there's no clearance points here where a bit of tape's needed at all. So we've just done one there, we've got the other one to do here. And as you can see, there's nothing within any clearance range. So very well designed PCB. Sometimes there are... Um, bits and pieces that overlap such as uh, LED um, pads and things like that on this board there are none or no but where it's going to short anything out or cause any circuitry problems so there we go that's our stabilizers installed all nice and neatly <laughs> Geo says at tile where can I get the screw mat <laughs> And Odin says, uh, do you guys know if there's a keyboard out there that supports the vintage Apple 2C keycap layout? Um, if you have a link to that, post a picture or a link to it, Odin. I'll take a look, but I'm not sure of one off the top of my head. Okay, so now we've done that, we're going to have a look at the, uh, the plate and get the switches ready to go as well. So as we said, the, uh, the plate itself is polycarbonate. It's very, very flexible. Um, so what I intend to do is pin it down in place around the corners of the few switches first, uh, and then work my way across the middle of the board, making sure it's all clipped in nicely from there. So I'll get the first switch in. Um, one thing I do want to do as well is just uh, remind you that I've got different weighted switches. So these are all of the alphas and the numpad keys. These ones here are for the arrow keys. These ones here are for the 2U mods and that one's for the space bar. So I'm just going to get these ones in first. Slight bend in that pin. Popping that into place, pop these ones in as well. Okay, almost there with that one. That switch isn't closed properly, but there we go, and now it is. Okay, there we go. So that's those in place. Just going to pop the uh, seven U spacebar key in place as well. Um, everything's labelled. I thought I'd seen one that says seven U. Oh yeah, there we go. Seven U spacebar. There we go. That's all nicely in place. As I mentioned before, you can see that the reset key just sits behind. That uh, lovely little cutout there for the uh, for the sound profile on the board as well, which is quite nice. We're then going to come up and do the backspace key. And these are 150 gram switches for the two U keys. Uh, we're going to pop the ISO enter key in. There we go. And then we've just got the two keys for here as well. Let's make sure we get the orientation correct. Now the rest of the keys we can pop anywhere. Uh, these are the ones that just make up the rest of the board. Uh, I'm going to try and space these out to begin with and then we'll fill in the gaps afterwards. Uh, 
and so we are going to do split left shift rather than doing the full right shift uh, the full shift key so I'll put both those in now and then those are in position and done okay pop some of the number pad keys in this is just making sure that the plate's nice and firm and solid and supported in all of the areas so when I start putting keys in random places I know it's all gonna fit nice and neatly there we go Okay, so now we've done that, I'm just going to go around and fill the board up row by row. Couple of bent pins on these. There we go. <clears throat> what weights have you gone for then? Uh, so in the main switches, uh, so the alphas, I've got uh, 72 gram. In the um, arrow keys, I've got 78 gram. In the 2U mod keys, I've got 150 gram, and then in the space bar, I've got 180 gram springs. All of them are uh, provided by Sprit uh, at cost, obviously. I've paid for those uh, from Sprit's website, um, Sprit Designs. Um, they have all been lubed with Crytox uh, 106 oil on the springs and Crytox 205 grade zero on the stems and the housings. Um, and they, other than that, they are stock tangerine, so the stock housing, top, bottom, and stem. And as I say there is a mix of switches from round one and round two, um, and you can differentiate the two between the colour of the switch. It's difficult for you to see on stream, but there are some that are slightly more yellowed. Um, that will change over time because these translucent tops do change colour just by uh, UV radiation. Um, we may not use that switch because it's been desoldered from something else and there's a blob of solder on the bottom that might stop it working. Heavy boys, yes, heavy switches. I like a heavy linear. Uh, if you're going to have a heavy switch, a linear is a way to do it. Um, I see you're a man of culture as well. Yes, absolutely. I do have a 125 gram linear board as well. Uh, Sprit springs went missing. Yeah, he'd been scammed. Um, you know, you might want to not use him for that. <laughs> um, Gormandar says that stinks. Uh, what stinks, dude? What stinks? Um, but I'm sure that they'll uh, they'll arrive on 59. I've I've had so many orders from Sprit over the past couple of years, and I've never had any issues with any of them. So. Um, uh, I'm sure you'll get what you asked for uh, in due course. And if not, just reach out to him. I'll show him. I'll show him. help you out. And uh, Saya says he's back. Oh, well, yes, I'm back. Uh, today's my first stream back on Top Clack. I will be on the show next week as well. I'll be back on Thursday's show. Um, and I do apologise for missing, missing that directly. He's usually fast with emails, but he's been dodging. Um, I don't know. I haven't spoken to him for a couple of weeks, so... Um, maybe just reach out to him. Uh, I'll try reaching out to him as well if you guys want. Um, I usually have a chat with him every now and again about his factory. He sends me pictures and updates. Um, so uh, I can have a look at that as well. Buy the spring from a third party site so he's obligated by the site in terms of use. That's an option as well. There are other places that do stock Sprit Springs. Uh, Pexon here in the UK, he stocks them. Uh, I think there's other providers as well. Uh, I think even novel keys might have them these days. Uh, Gavin says, buy the spring from the... Oh, yeah, okay, uh, old time it's die hard, and I ordered from his site. Um, I think that uh, Sprit, for all of his faults in the past, is a changed man. I know that's not a popular uh, view, uh, but I'm more about uh, giving people second chances and more options and rehabilitation rather than uh, uh, continuous punishment. Um, so I've not had any issues with any orders. If I have, he's always swiftly put them right. Um, he's open in communication. Uh, he seems to be a reformed person, a changed person. And that's something we should celebrate and support. And, you know, I'm, as I say, I'm all about rehabilitation rather than constant uh, punishment. So, um, so yeah. That's 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 my fault on it. Uh, Pexon doesn't sell progressives yet, as far as I know. Uh, I, I haven't looked at Pexon's uh, full list or, or range at the moment, so uh, uh, I'm not certain what he does and doesn't have. Um, but I do know he has some Sprit Springs. Uh, 
<clears throat> okay. Is there a samples pack of sprit springs? Uh, I'm not sure if there is, but if I've got loads of odds and ends, so if you want to try some out, um, Rage and Asian, send me your address and I can send you like two or three of a couple of different weights, something like that, for you to have a try and play around with. They might be pre lubed, they might not be, depends on what I've got around, um, but I've probably got most weights available. The uh, thing is, you're a known person in the community. Wonder if you'd be that nice to a random person. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it still does make you think. So most of the conversations that I'm referring to with Sprit were before I started streaming. Um, I don't think I was really well known before I started streaming. Um, I don't think I'm particularly well known in the community now. Um, the only thing I'd done of note prior to that was the Hyper 7. Um, so, you know, take that as your yardstick, if you will. Um, I will be building with stepped caps lock today, um, so we'll be using the uh, the left hand of the two switch positioning options. And then we're just working our way through the rest of this row, and then we'll have a look at the bottom row. Now this PCB is wonderful because for uh, Luddites like me, it's pre-labeled with what I need to do in terms of which key and where. Um, so it does tell me exactly where I need to put the, uh, the switches for uh, 7U to work, the 7U bottom row to work. Um, so thank you very much for that, Max. I really genuinely appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, so we're almost there now, guys. Uh, just close that switch properly. Just a few more switches to go. We'll have a look at the bottom row. And then we'll crack on with the soldering. Okay, as I say, uh, this is nicely labeled for anyone wanting to use the 7U bottom row option. Um, so it's really, really clear where you need to put the keys. He says he struggles to get one in. Another bent pin, soon fixed. There we go. That's right there. Just gonna check that with some keycaps. Uh, what do I have available without busting open a set? Just gonna check this bottom row using these cat keys. They're ready to go back to Brian. Okay, it looks right there. There we go. So that's everything put into place. That's all those switches in. Uh, a couple of spare ones there, which we don't need. Just move them to one side. Having a look at this, as you can see, the plate is now all straightened up. Everything is now flush on all of the rows. All of the switches are pressed in. That uh, plate just needs lifting there. Um, same down that side same down the back everything is nice and flush or just about everything uh, I've got a pin on this one that's why that one's not flush there we go just try and straighten this pin up or switch it for another switch that's going to be quicker and easier There we go, and you can see that's now all nice and flush down there and down the final side as well. Um, just in terms of the pins, I'm just going to go through and double check each of the switches has its pins showing through, uh, and noting if I have any that seem to have uh, a missing pin. And again, just straighten these up where that bend has happened. I'm just going through, just double checking all of them, making sure I've got no missing pins. Okay, 
got another one just down here. Again, these switches have been soldered and desoldered from a different board. So there might be the odd one that is a little bit weaker uh, and therefore easier to bend. Okay, and the rest of the board looks good. So there we go. Yeah, okay, there we go. So everything is now ready for the build. Move all of these tools out of the way. And it's time to get the soldering iron ready. <clears throat> Let's wait for this to heat up. Turn this over. And while we're doing that, um, we'll just have a look and see what's going on in chat. Um, always nice to have labels on the PCB. Yeah, it makes a world of difference to have labels on the PCB. So, Max, thank you very much for that. It's spot on. Uh, do you think the sound cutouts next to the large keys makes a big difference? Yes, it does. So, I've done a bit of a um, testing with this with the J01. So, I have a plate that doesn't have the sound cutouts and the plate that does. There is a big difference on the larger 2U stabilised keys and the space bar where the cutouts are uh, than where they aren't. I've also done it on the Nox Reax 75 prototype, which is just here on the back wall. Um, effectively, you get more ping without the cuts, and you lose that ping and get a more resonant sound with the cuts. So it's definitely an improvement in my opinion and my view. Uh, Cat Alpha, good choice. That's not going on this board. It was just the easier key set to grab hold of because uh, Taro is in a box. Um, so we'll be opening Taro in a second and getting ready to use that once we've finished this done. Um, I've ordered springs and Crytox from Sprit quite a bit and it's gone very well. Uh, yeah, Rob, that's my experience as well. Um, I have uh, zero issues so far. Um, and where I've had like delays in shipping and things like that, uh, he's been very, very responsive and receptive. So I'm just going to tack in a switch in each corner and then once I've done that I'm going to tack in a switch, a couple of switches in the middle and then I'll go row by row and just solder through. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of switches towards the middle of the board now. So next the aim is to solder row by row and just make our way through. Uh, Gavin says, does a sprit include a heavy spring for space bars? Usually, yes, he does, absolutely. Um, ooh, Cypher kit edition, that looks good. Quite okay. Have you just put LEDs across the whole space bar? I'm looking at it on Discord now, and does that move around? Oh, it does move, oh, that's awesome. That's, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool, dude. I like that a lot. Um, I may have to install those LEDs on this board and do that later on. Maybe go with a rainbow effect or something similar. Okay, so we're just going through row by row here, starting on the top row. Making our way all the way across the board. I'm just going to jump back here. Let me follow that one a little bit. There we go. Okay. Amazing how after a couple of weeks of not soldering, you kind of lose the speed and the efficiency. I'm sure it'll come back as we go through this build. Just being careful around the USB port, there's a couple of wires, pins, uh, components that I just want to avoid a touch. Make sure that I'm not impacting them or affecting them in any way with the soldering. Okay, now we're on the backspace key. And then from here we move on to the numpad. Okay, we're just going to quickly do the numpad itself. 
and then once I've done that I'll move over to the 60% side of the keyboard and just solder through that and just try and chunk it into sections. Doing the plus key on the numpad at the moment. Move down, we've already done the enter key. So we're just gonna carry on doing the rest of the numbers here. Okay. And just while we're here, we'll do the arrow pad as well. And then it is just the 60% part of the board left to do. That's all of those done. Now we're just going to clean off the uh, clean off the soldering iron and start to work across the tab row, also the qwerty row. Um, and then once we've done this, we'll start to move down the board. I'll have a catch up with the chat after I finish this row. See where you guys have got to what you're talking about, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, finishing up the build and popping some keycaps on there. Trying to get a little bit more into the flow here now, guys. Picking back up some of that speed that we've lost over the last couple of weeks. Okay. Okay, now we're on the ISO enter. I'm just going to come back along this row, which is the home row. Skip the switches we already soldered to hold it together uh, at the first, the middle switches. Okay. Making good progress. Okay, almost done with this row. And then we can start to look at the bottom row and the spacebar row, so the Z row, or the Z row, and the spacebar row as well. Making the way down this row nice and swiftly and easily. Just going to try and do the bottom row keys as and when I get to them. So as I pull in line with them on the shift row, the Z row, I'll uh, just drop down and do the bottom row as well. And then what we'll do is we'll do a quick switch hit test and make sure that the app is working, so the board is working correctly, all the keys are registering, fix any that aren't and then we'll carry on with the build from there. down to the base row to do the spacebar switch here. And not the spacebar switch, we missed the spacebar, sorry. There we go, just do that one nice and quickly. 
going to reflow ones that look a little bit too much soul has been put on them. Quickly just clean that off. And just give that a reflow and that a reflow. There we go. And then just finish off these last couple of switches. Okay. And there we go. We are completely soldered. There we go. Nice and easy, guys. So before I turn that off, I'm just going to put it to one side. Let's just take a look at Switch Hitter and see how we've got on with the build there. Uh, I'll just have to catch up with... Uh, chat very quickly. Um, that's one with rainbow colours. Let me take a look at that. Ooh, that looks good. I do appreciate that. That looks really nice. Uh, I do like that. Um, uh, yes, I have cables by uh, West Fox as well, just to show you. Um, I've got the, uh, not actual Lemo, but kind of a Lemo connector. One cable runs down the middle of the coil, uh, the other coil here. That does have interchangeable ends, so it's really easy for me to change between USB mini and USB C, which this board uses. Uh, so, a very, thanks, a very big thanks to Max for doing that. And if you check out Max, he's got a Teihei Types uh, or a Nathan Kim um, offer on it at the minute as well on his website, so go check that out. Um, let me just catch up. I'll be placing a cable order once I build my new desk. Might be the same as the cables. Has anyone tried to make a low profile switch build? Not as yet, but I am interested in doing it. But there's only one keycap set I can find that fits it. So watch this space, Gavin. I'll try and do that soon. Uh, did I start at the edges or the middle edges? Uh, no, I, I do one in each corner. Um, uh, I think that's Walker, isn't it? Yeah, so Walker, what I do is I do one in each corner, two in the middle, and then I just go row by row. The middle ones pull it all together nice and neatly. The difference between this and a normal build is that this is a polycarbonate plate, so it's very, very flexible, um, and it's much easier to do that way. Um, if it was a firmer build and things weren't quite aligning, I do agree that it's better to work your way out from the middle, but for this purpose, it was dead easy. Um, does it run QMK? Yes, this does run QMK. Um, so there we go. Uh, Walker loves the solder spool holder. I need one of those. Yeah, I got it for as a gift from uh, Tidal from Josh as a Secret Santa gift. Uh, so thank you very much for that, Josh. Um, so I will need to flash the ISO hex file, uh, which we can do uh, in a few minutes. Uh, but the first, so in fact, we'll do that first. So I've got another cable by Max here. So this is my lovely little coiled um, telephone cable. So again, thank you to Max for making this one for me. Um, so what we're going to do is just uh, quickly flash this. Now I just need to grab some files. I'll carry on talking whilst I do that. Uh, Max did send me them earlier on. Um, I'm just going to really quickly do this. Sorry guys, I know this is uh, a little bit frustrating for you guys. I'm just going to quickly flash it. Um, Okay, just gonna flash that. There we go. All flash, so I'm just gonna unplug it and plug it back in. There we go. So that's that all done. Uh, as you can see, the reset button is just underneath the space bar, um, underneath the little cut out there, uh, the nice shiny point. So it does make it really easy to access. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab up switch hitter, and you guys should be able to see this in a second. It should just appear. Uh, there you go. So I'm just gonna run through all of these keys. Uh, you should go be able to see them light up as they do. Uh, let me change this to, uh, there we go. So we've got escape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, dash, plus, and backspace, all working. Got tab, QWERTY keys. And the enter all working nicely there. Caps lock, uh, the A row, the home row, all working well. The shift row, all working well as well. Uh, control alt space, uh, space bar not working, we'll have a look at it in a second. Uh, I think that's set as FN, so we'll be all right from that. Uh, right key not working, uh, 0 0.123456789, uh, num lock. 
there we go so all working there just have a look at the right key um, and yeah that's not working either so I'm just gonna have a look at those keys now see if we can see why that isn't working let's just reflow this right key straight for my sword and iron to get up to speed Okay, let's give that a try, see if that's working now, and then we'll have a look at the spacebar afterwards. Uh, I hope if I was in the right app for you to see this. Okay, right, still not working, so it might be a switch issue. Let's uh, see if we can loosen this out and pull it out while we're desoldering it. And then what we can do is we can change the switch. Wouldn't normally desold this way, guys, but I'm just trying to get the switch out. Ah, there we go, that was my bent pin on the switch. So what we're going to do now is realign that up, heat pads, and push it in. I would help if we could. Okay, we may need to desolder this properly. Hold on, let me grab the desoldering iron. I wasn't prepared for this. I do apologise for the noise this will make, but this is the desoldering gun. Let's just close switch hits for now, we'll come back to that in a second. <sighs> Sounds like it's working just okay. For a while since I've used this gun, uh, probably in the region of about a month or so, so hopefully it's still all working. Doesn't need a clean out, as you can see, it's rather full of old solder. While we're doing that, I'll just have a catch up with uh, chat. Uh, has anyone tried to make a low profile? We talked about that. Um, Jay, is that a custom Xbox controller there? It looks like the paddle on the back could just be something underneath it. Um, it's an Xbox One Elite controller with a custom top, yes. <coughs> um, uh, it's a soft touch red custom top case, that's all it is. Dead easy. I think it was cheap, I think it was like £15 on eBay. Um, got an update oh, called Surgery Robot Melt. Oh. I'm so glad, so glad. Uh, please don't shoot us. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, no, I won't shoot you. I'm just waiting for it to get up to temperature. Uh, and then we'll just quickly desolder this. Okay, there we go. I should be able to pop that switch back in now. There we go. And if we give that a resolder, we can test that we're all working correctly. We would do if my solder decided to melt. There we go. And the second one, there we go. Let's just test that and make sure that that's all working now. This was the right key. Um, so there we go, you can see that's now working. The next one to look at is space. Uh, space bar key doesn't appear to be working just there. Let's just have another look at the space bar key. Uh, we'll try reflowing it first. Uh, if I, actually, I think I might have spotted the problem on this. I don't know if you guys can see, but right here, this component, 
in fact I can't even see what I'm showing you guys here, let me just move this out of the way. Um, right here this component looks like it's slightly out of position so I'm just going to try adding a touch of solder to that as well uh, to nudge that back into place. Let's give that a try and see if that's now working. I hope if I didn't drop my solder there. Okay, so just click back on the app. And there you go, you can see it was just that little component, not the solder of the switch. Uh, just check that that works as well. Uh, and the other one was here, which I believe is set to FN because uh, there doesn't look to be any issue with the soldering on that key um, so I'm comfortable that that's all now working just turn these soldering irons off and pop these away, sorry guys I won't be a second there we go, don't want to burn down the house Okay, so there we go, everything's all soldered, everything is all now working. Uh, shoot the PCB assembler, um, I don't know who that was, I'm guessing it was Martin, um, but it was just one component that was slightly out of line, but there we go, all fixed and sorted. Um, so now we've done that, we are going to carry on with the build. So I'm not going to put any indicator LEDs in this board today. I could do, it's nice and easy to access, they're just there. If I change my mind, I may do them later. Um, but I'm not particularly a fan of LED indicator lights. So I'm going to leave those uh, for now. Just going to align this all up. There we go, everything's now in place. I'm going to take these screws, which are Phillips screws. And I'm just going to pop these in. I'm going to go diametrically opposed. I'm just going to go, remember this is polycarb plate, so I'm not going too tight, I'm just tightening these finger tight. And the main reason for that is I don't want to damage the polycarb, um, as these are the points that the, uh, the PCB rests on and the typing field is all dedicated to. So the last thing I want to do is damage them in any way, shape, or form. Hope if I could get my fat fingers in on this one. Let's try that again. Nope. Third time looking. Max, you need to buy screws that are magnetic. Would make this a world easier. There we go. And we're just going to come up to this top corner. Uh, as I say, always going diametric opposed. Uh, that's basically means go diagonally and the reason we do that is just from uh, an engineering perspective to spread the load evenly and equally um, with a plate mounting like this it's important to make sure that you're not just applying the load laterally as you screw from one side to the other because um, then you may come into problems when you hit the other side so if you go diametrically opposed same reason you do this for an engine really uh, to make sure that the head and the gasket and everything else are all aligned correctly If any of you have ever worked on cars, you'll have experience of it. Just lost that screw under the PCB there. Okay, last screw for the top mounting. There we go. Okay, there we go. That's that in time. Uh, we're now going to move on to popping the bottom of the case on. So as I mentioned before, we have got these lovely aligning pins, uh, which are going to make this a uh, snap easy job. Um, so what we're going to do is align the uh, the PCB cutout port. He says this is going to make it an easy job. But it's not being particularly easy at the minute. Go. 
all aligned correctly. So the difficulty I had there was just to explain is the PCB port's flush with the outside of the case, so it's in line with that. So I kind of had to bend the PCB port, the USB port down a slight bit to get the pins to align, um, because the PCB is now connected to the top half of the board, uh, everything else. Um, but the pink on the bottom looks lovely, I think you'll agree. Um, so I'm just going to screw this together now. Now, I am using a Torx bit for a hex screw because my hex bits don't want to fit. I suspect that because my hex bits are in Imperial and these are probably metric screws or vice versa. And again, just going to go diametrically across, across the board. Don't have to worry about alignment here. Everything is all nice and neatly aligned because of those alignment pins. Glue says, Ugh. I'm uh, not sure if that's a good noise or a bad noise, but I'm going to assume it's a good noise. Okay, that one just slipping slightly. board built for Olivia. Yes, absolutely. GMK Olivia will be going on this board when I get it from work, uh, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, and I'll take some pictures with that key set on. Absolutely. Uh, chose this color for Olivia, not the set for the person. Yeah, fully aware of that, Max. Uh, Olivia, if you've got a cipher, I'd love to see some pictures. Um, I'm not sure if Olivia's still watching. She was watching right at the beginning of the stream, so I'm hoping she still is. fully put together. So there you go, you can see that the uh, feel is that the, all, all the keycaps uh, need to go on, but uh, other than that the board is built. Um, there is a fair amount of flexibility on this, you can't probably see that on, on stream, um, but I'm, I'll try and show you up close, um, but there is a fair amount of flex in the middle of the plate, um, it's not really showing on screen, but there is, you have to take my word for it, you have to take my word for it. Uh, Necromancer says, who's Stacks keycap sets at work. It's just on my work board, um, and I thought it was at home, and it wasn't. Um, so there we go. Yeah, um, I can see it. Ooh, flex. Yeah, it was visible. Yeah, it's visible. Cool. Glad you guys can see it. Um, personally, I tend to prefer firmer boards, but we're going to try how to see how this flex is. Um, I have got uh, a carbon fiber plate uh, coming, so if I dislike the flex on this, I can change it for the carbon fiber plate. And carbon fiber plate broadly feels the same as aluminium, or maybe a little bit firmer, closing in on brass. Um, which is more my preferred feel, um, and it also has a nice sound profile. But I mainly want to try the polycarbonate here for the sound to see how it sounds on a board uh, like this with this kind of layout because I don't have another polycarbonate board build. Um, I'm just going to grab the keycap set now. This is still in its cellophane, but it has been used. As I say, we are using uh, Jim K Taro for today. Um, we will move it over to, uh, as I say, Jim K Olivia in the near future. This seems a little bit stuck in here. Hold on. Let's get rid of that. There we go. I feel like there's a couple of kits underneath that haven't been ever used, um, as well as the novelties. So I won't be using the novelties today, I don't think. Um, we we'll probably going to plumb for one of the purple cores, probably go for this one, just for the escape key, um, there we go, and <clears throat> I think we'll just stick with the nice plum colours and probably not go for any accents uh, on this build unless anyone suggests otherwise. run through popping these keycaps on here. In fact, I believe this has UK ISO, it does, there we go. Now this set is supposedly used, but it looks brand spanking new. Um, so I'm very impressed. Just going through chats, Jay flexing on us poor peeps. Um, I work hard, man. I work hard. I like to buy nice things. That's all it is. 
Uh, cheeks looking red, dude. I'm so warm at the minute. I apologize if I'm bright red. Um, it's been a long weekend. It's very warm in my home office at the minute. My cheeks aren't sore. Nothing sore. It's just tiredness, if anything. Spending 80 hours straight in a hospice over the course of three days all, uh, or four days. We'll, we'll do that to anyone, I'm afraid, dude. It's uh, been a long old week uh, and I'm glad I've got something as fun as spending it with you guys to close out what's been not a good week at all for me. Um, but you have to end on a high note and this is my high note for the week. Being able to build a board by one of my best friends in the keyboard community um, with a key set I bought off another best friend in the keyboard community and sharing it with all of the lovely Top Pack supporters. Um, all of you guys make what Brian and I do uh, as well as the other streamers, Nathan and uh, Anthony and everyone else, you know, incredibly happy to uh, to keep supporting the community. So thank you guys in advance, um, and thank you for keeping me sane tonight. Now we did go with step caps lock. I have to find the key for that. It's down here. Uh, Cipher is an AKL board, please. Okay, I apologise. I apologise. Uh, Uri for the win says, uh, greetings, first time I'm able to join the stream live. Have you been able to try some Gatoron ink switches? How would you rate these tangerines? Uh, so in terms of the Gatoron ink switches, I actually have two builds with them in. I have the other build of the J01, uh, which has got GMK Red Samurai on. That's on the wall just here. Um, that has inks in. And also my TMO50, which you can see just here, that has uh, Gatoron inks in as well. Um, I absolutely love and adore those switches. They're probably my favorite linear right now. Um, I love the smoky housing. I love the colour of them. Um, I think they're a blast of a switch to use. Um, but today I'm using tangerines. Uh, prior to the inks, tangerines were my favourite linear. Uh, and in fact, Max West Foxtrot uh, kind of built my polycarbonate sinker for me as a wedding present last year. Um, and that was my first board with tangerines. And I still use that on a regular basis as well. <clears throat> so I just need to use the split shift for ISO. Uh, and I need to find the keycap for that. So there we go, that's that just there. Okay guys, let me know in terms of what you think on novelties. Should I just keep it with the uh, with the ISO enter that matches the backspace on this, or do you think I should go for one of the coloured ones? Um, again, I'm not having much, much choice for the uh, the rest of the board, but let me know if you want an accent key on the enter, or if you just want me to go with the uh, the standard uh, set key. Okay, I'm just going to put the last shift key on there, and then we're going to work down onto the seven U row. I think the seven U keycap is in here. So let's just grab that out from there. There we go. Just need to find the rest of the 1.5 U keycaps. Ship in a drop, there it is. There we go. Um, so I can go with either normal arrow keys or accent arrow keys and normal enter or accent enter. Um, uh, beautiful keyporas, by the way. Oh, thank you very much, dude. And uh, you're from Barcelona. Nice, nice. Uh, better than Telios though, I'm definitely interested in this. So I think Telios are slightly smoother, but Telios need a lot more work to get them to sound good. Um, I prefer the thick, heavy bases of, uh, of the Gatoron switches, um, and the inks uh, have that lovely smoky feel to them as well. Uh, smoky look to them, sorry. Uh, and big thanks for saying my nickname properly. Most people can't get that done. Um, I, I had to double check it and read it twice, um, so, so there we go. Uh, ISO Master Race, absolutely, yeah. No accents, normal, standard enter. Um, standard, standard. Okay, my advice guy has to go to bed. Good evening. I missed whether you said I should post or not, so do, do PM me on that. Okay, so in that case, we're going to go with the normal uh, standard keycaps, and we're not going to go for the accents. Okay. Okay. 
And now we're just going to jump on to the number pad. And then we're almost there now. I have gone with the scooped rather than the barred keys. Uh, to those of you with horror, I do prefer the scooped keys where I can have them. Um, I do have some bills with the bars on. I tend to prefer the scooped keys. It's just easier to find to my fingertips. Uh, PM me tomorrow, uh, and I was having some kind of sneezing attack when you asked. No worries, dude. Just PM me whenever you're ready, dude. This is GMK Tarot, right? It is, yeah. ISO X and Enter is so nice, though. It is, but it depends on the board and whether it fits it. I will use that for uh, GMK Olivia, which is what will be on this board permanently. Um, I'm literally just using this keycap set because it's what I have to hand. Um, it was either this or it was going to be Sky Dolch or GMK Coniferous, and I thought that this was probably the best fit of the three. Um, and then tomorrow when I get to go into work, I will pick up the, uh, the remainder uh, of this set. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the GMK Olivia set. I have the number pad here and the rest of the key set in its box, but I don't have um, um, the rest of the, uh, the set here, so the alphas and everything else that's in use on the board that it's in. Okay, guys, so there we go. That's the keys popped onto the board. I'm just going to put this key set away. There's a pain of a keycap set boxes. I really do wish GMK had come up with some better solution for this. As I say, we're not going to use any of the novelties or any of the accents after your advice, guys. So thank you very much for that. I completely agree, by the way. If I'd been picking this myself, I wouldn't have used them either. all tucked away nice and neatly. So there's the board all put together. Uh, it is working just fine. Uh, I won't plug it in for the typing test when we do that. Uh, but as you can see, it does look rather nice and splendid. I like this keycap set more than I thought I would. Um, it's really nice. I'm really happy with that. You can see it doesn't quite work with the pink, but it's not too terrible. Uh, Jim K. Olivia will work better. A little bit of dust on the back of this board here. There we go. There we go on the base as well with the name here. Um, once we've got the board built up, I do tend to inlay this with black paint um, and, and infill that. I have got some of the blackest black paint coming, which is what I intend to use for that uh, logo there. I'm off a Kickstarter uh, because someone has Vanta Black um, registered and you can't get that as an acrylic paint because only they're allowed to use it as an artist. So someone has done the blackest black on Kickstarter. I backed that and I should have that paint in a couple of weeks. So when I have that, I'll infill that logo on stream and show you guys my method for doing it. Tolerance on the USB port is amazing. Yep, yeah, it's really nice and neat and tight. Um, I have seen closer, but this is really, really good. It is really nice. Absolutely lovely. So there we go. Um, just going to catch up with chat because there's a lot going on since I had a look at the board last. Uh, it is GMK Tarot. Yes, uh, Yuri. Um, you're going to ping me tomorrow, my advice guy, and good night. Uh, Olivia will be going on in the near future. Yes, tomorrow I'm going to change it over to GMK Olivia. I just need to pick up the set from work. A uh, bit of black top. Uh, I think the regular like this looks better. Oh, yes, sorry, Bledin. Yes, the regular does look better for Taro. I agree. I think this looks really nice. Uh, it's kind of a bluish and purplish set and it looks really neat and tidy. Rage and Asian with uh, one, two, three, four, five hundred 500 bits, sending in more energy. Thank you, dude. I really needed that. That's uh, really cheered me up. Um, I wish I had a Olivia set. I love the rose gold of it. I have it on my uh, TX65 at the minute, which is a white board. Um, so I have the 60% on that, uh, and that's at work. And I need to go collect the board and the keycaps tomorrow when I'm in the office. Um, that def is a sleeper hit. Yes, um, did not sell amazingly, and everyone regretted it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Gio says, let me know if you ever want to sell Tara. I've literally only just used it for the first time, um, so I won't be selling it anytime soon. Uh, OMG Kitties, yay. Uh, thank you very much for the sub. Really appreciate that. Um, oh, and uh, Bloodin says, if you don't have a use for it, I'll happily take Tara. Well, none of you having it. It's as simple as that, and that's it. Um, felt bags, done. Uh, Titan, that's probably not a bad idea for keycap sets. That might be something to have a look into. Uh, felt bags, yeah, I might have a look into that. 
Um, best storage method without shelves. I use drawers for all of my key sets. I've got a raft of drawers down here. They, the, the key sets slide in. I keep five key sets in a drawer and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I've got 15 drawers with five GMK sets in each, plus I've got 11 GMK sets in the top uh, Ottoman uh, in boxes, and then I think I've got a handful, maybe 10 uh, GMK sets in bags as well. So I've, someone has got a good group deal on about 50 felt bags, I may pick them up. Um, version two or three, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, sorry, Gio, I don't know what you mean for that. I might have missed what I was saying there. Um, the biggest, oh my god, could see with the sub. My girlfriend says that she will take any feedback about this keyboard very personally and fight any biatch who dares say it's not nice. It's not nice. No, it's lovely. I genuinely love it. Only thing I'd change, remove the LED indicators because that's not for me. I might put some LEDs in there later on, um, but that's just my personal preference. The layout for the board is perfect for me in work. It's absolutely ideal. Um, I do like the separators, as you can see on my personal board. I also have separators between the uh, arrows um, and what I use as a macro row or what is on this board uh, for the numpad. Um, I like to rest my pinky when I'm about to type and when I'm thinking, uh, and that just gives me that perfect opportunity to do it. Um, uh, and it was designed for her. Yes, yes. Well, Max, you've done a blind day. It's really good. Um, already had one before, so I know what I'm getting into at least. And I moved on. I just wanted to say things. Yeah. Uh, this board is called the Cipher. It looks somewhat similar to the IC check uh, on Geekak of the Keeb named Rain M3. So actually, Bledin is the one of the uh, the designers uh, of the Rain M3, along with Satan Anarchist, who was watching earlier. Um, they're very different because that's a 40%. So you lose kind of two columns here. Um, and that's kind of squished over for the Rain M3. So although it's very similar, uh, it's not the same. This board uh, is obviously real and not vaporware. Um, and until I've seen the Proto, which I know Satanarchist and Bledin are working on, uh, that one is. So this one is first in my opinion. But neither are a copy. I think they're very similar uh, concepts. But neither of them are a copy of each other or a clone of each other. Very separate keyboards for that reason. One's a 40%, one's a 60%. And they've both got a numpad and, uh, and, and arrow keys separately. I think that's pretty fair. Um, <clears throat> let's just catch up. Uh, Gia says, My strong fart, I like your girlfriend. Yeah, I like his girlfriend too. Um, she's great, she's great. Um, I'm gonna have to try your infill method on my QXP way when it gets here. Yeah, Danton Bock has actually used my method quite successfully on a number of his boards in the past couple of weeks. I've seen it plastered on his Alice's and a few other bits and pieces, so yeah, it works really, really well. 90 plus GMK sets, I've got a lot of GMK sets. Um, the difference being this is 1800 minus F row. Yeah, it kind of is, and the uh, Rain M3 is an 1800 by 40% star bond. Yeah, the, you've uh, you've articulated it better than I did verbally. Yeah. Imagine an RGB strip like the CA66. That's the one thing I want rid of on the CA66. If it got rid of that and it had a bit better internal dampening, then I would prefer that board. I think. Uh, oh, sorry, I would like that board more, not prefer it. Um, I like indicators. Yeah, everyone likes a different thing. Um. You know, it's not vaporware. It's in the post room. It's vaporware until I've seen it in real life. That's how I think about it. I think actually I was going to chat about Satan and Kiss about whether we wanted to do a build stream of it because it'd be quite nice to do. So if you are up for that bledding, that might be quite nice to do. Um, if not, then I'll probably end up buying one anyway. You know what I'm like for UK funded and run projects. Um, before we go any further though, guys, the next thing to do is uh, to put the music on pause and to give this board a sound test and see what we think to the sound. Um, so just as a reminder, this is uh, GMK Taro on the Cypher, uh, which is a board by CableCarDesigns.co, uh, Max specifically. It's using a polycarbonate plate and tangerines with lubed uh, sprit springs, uh, which has been used with 106, and the switches themselves have been lubed with Crytox 205 grade zero. 72 grams on the Alphas, 78 grams on the arrow keys and then on any two U key or greater there is a 150 gram spring and on the space bar we've got 180 grams. So that's the board and here is the sound test so let me know what you think afterward guys.
So there we go, guys. What do you think to that? Um, Swires beat me to it. It's in the post to him. Ah, uh, oh well, never mind. Um, streams get more views. <laughs> uh, typing test. Um, sounds like a keyboard. It does. Love how the chat goes quiet for the typing test. Uh, it sounds good. Uh, may I ask you about your loop preferences and filling switch? I'll come back to that in a second, Yuri. Don't worry. Um, sounds very nice indeed. Chat is technically always quiet. Try not to curse at Jace space by usage. Just look away. Just look away. Um, I like look at those little hamster hands go. Yeah, hamster hands. Um, was another angry email to the boss. No, it wasn't. Uh, it was actually uh, something quite personal, but never mind. Uh, I'm not going to go through what it was. Just posted the IC for Brutal 60. Ooh, nice. My Brutal 60 should be in the post soon. Uh, so we'll look at that. Um, so there we go. That's what it sounds like. Um, It's interesting what you can hear. You can hear the difference between the heavier keys and the, uh, the non heavy keys. So, the heavier springs keys do sound quieter. I think that's because you don't hit the bottom out as hard. Um, so, that is interesting to note. I think the board feels lovely actually. Um, I'm surprised by the amount of flex. It might be easy for me to show you now the keycaps on how much flex there is here. If you look at that top row. It's kind of difficult to show you because my hand's uh, flexing. But there is a fair amount of flex. There's probably half a millimeter of flex in there off of the just off of the normal presses. It's very difficult to show you when I'm holding the keyboard up, but it definitely is there. Let's try one more way of showing you. So that's the key bottom out there, and then that's the flex. There we go. I hope that helps show you. Um, so there we go. Um, that is the board. I think it's fantastic. I think it looks good. I like the Kippur on there. I think it looks smart. Um, I am going to change it over to Jim K. Olivia tomorrow, and I'll take some pictures of it at that point there. But thank you, Max, for sending me the board. Let's just catch up with chat quickly. Uh, I wanted to go back to Yuri's question around loop preferences for linear switches. I generally prefer using oils for linear switches rather than greases, so I will usually use Crytox 104 for the housing and the um, the stem, and Crytox 106 for the spring. Um, but uh, for this one, I've gone with 205 grade zero on the stem uh, and 106 on the spring, uh, but I do tend to prefer it the other way around. That being said, I do prefer the 205 grade zero on the ink switches if you're gonna use those in a build. Um, linear switches, says Dark Destroyer. Yes, they are. These are tangerines, um, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> Build stream exclusive, <laughs> yeah. Build stream exclusive, exclusive from link uh, from UPass uh, for the link for his uh, brutal sixty IC. Um, um, my brutal sixty is with UPass at the minute. He'll be shipping it in a couple of days' time. All being well, uh, and I'll have that on stream soon. Um, Sick ones says oof flex for us a zaddy. Yes, it does flex. Uh, Taro just jumped up my want list. It's really nice. Um, I just love looking at Jim K. Jim K. Tower. The colours are so cute. How thick is the PCB? I'm doing a 1.2 millimeter PCB with FR4 plate. Next, I wonder how this would compare. So, uh, say so yeah, what you need to remember with 1.6 millimeter, this, which this is, is that that's what cherry stabs are designed to clip into, and all other stabs are 1.2 millimeter. They won't. You'll need to have some way of making sure that the stabs clip in. So, just factor that into your designs. Um, what was the lube that I bought from you and never used at the last meet? I can't remember, but I still have it. That was from Mechboards. Mechboards asked me to take that along. Uh, that was RO59, which is a lube that you apply and then let dry and then reapply and do a couple of layers over a period of a couple of days. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if it would be any good for lubing topper stems. No, absolutely not. It will not. Um, West Fox Rock, have you tried any thinner PCBs? I'm a little curious about those. Uh, have another board that I'm expecting with PCBs flex cuts 1.2 millimeter. Um, it's on its way for 1.2 millimeter uh, in a top mount. See if impacts feel. Yeah, I'm curious about that as well, Gio. It's an interesting question. I do think you have to be careful around the stabilizer cutouts because you do need to make sure it's thick enough to have them clip in. 
Um, yep, yeah, so it's a trap that a few people have fallen into. Um, so yeah, have a chat with West Foxtrot, have a chat with Pingu, join the Discord servers and have a chat with those guys because they are looking at it as Max says there. Um, I think Pingu is watching earlier on. I know he has, as you say, Max done a 1.2 millimeter thickness PCB, I think. Um, and I know a couple of people have ordered them in the past by mistake. Um, 0.8 millimeter PCB with 0.8 millimeter stab extensions. Uh, <laughs> Galaxy Brain. Yeah, you could do that actually, Max. You could do that. Um, wouldn't screw ins with washers alleviate a thickness issue? Yes, they would, Geo, but you have to make sure you've got the washers of the right thickness. Um, it's just one of those things you have to uh, bear in mind uh, when you're designing those PCBs. Uh, and Pingu couldn't stay for internet problems. Ah, okay, so I'll catch up with him later, but yes, you should definitely uh, hit him up for that. Um, someone, I think it was yourself, Danny, who asked about uh, one of my old artisans uh, earlier on as well. Um, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, that it's actually my little drawer here, if I can get it out. Um, you asked me where it was, and if I still had it. So here's proof, I still do have it. There you go, it's an old... Um, I remember the name of the sculpt now. Um, it's a bird. I can't remember the name of the sculpt. It's completely left my head. But yes, I do have it still. Uh, and there's the proof. Okay, Heine has a 1.2 millimeter on his TKL uh, PCB. I think he uses washers for his stamps there. Yes, um, uh, he does. Uh, less than 1.2 millimeter would be overkill as far as I know. Interesting. Uh, Taka, that's it. Yes, I couldn't remember the name of it. I was thinking Kipora, Kipora, Kipora. I couldn't think of what it was, but yes, Taka. But I still have it, Danny. Yes, thank you very much for uh, for reminding me of that. Okay, guys, so that's two hours into the stream. Uh, I am going to close it down now. Uh, thank you very much to Max again for letting me buy one of these boards from him. I absolutely love it. I think it's going to be great at work. I can't wait to get Jim K. Olivia on there uh, and try that out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, for, to trying this board over the next week or so. I'm really happy with it. Thank you everyone who's watched today. Thank you very much for your support, your condolences around my mother and everything else that's happened this past week. Um, I love you all and I thank you very much for anything that you've done, all the words of encouragement. When I logged on to uh, Discord this morning, I had over 300 PMs and just people saying, I hope I'm doing okay and that kind of stuff. So thank you to everyone, even if I didn't get back to you. Um, I'll be back on stream on Thursday this week on Top Clack Show. Um, I will be back in the Discord, probably not as much as normal, but I'll still be there for the next few days. Um, and I do have a build planned for next week as well, which is at the moment, it's currently going to be my uh, POM kayak, but that might change if the Brutal 60 gets here before then, or if one of my other group buy boards arrives before then as well. Um, but yeah, it'll be a POM kayak next week, just to see how a full POM keyboard sounds. So that's POM case, uh, POM plate, uh, and then we'll be using some box pink switches for that build as well. Um, so thanks very much guys, uh, I'm going to catch you all later, um, I'll be back on the Discord for another hour or so before I hit bed, uh, and then tomorrow I'll take some pictures and get them up on my Instagram, and probably the top of my Instagram as well if you want to go and check those out, but do check out cablecardesigns.co, Max's site, do check out uh, his Instagram, West Foxtrot and Cable Car on Insta, and, uh, and go and show him all the love and support you can, um, and thanks again for watching guys, I really do appreciate it, and I can't wait to see you again, see you later.